Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Aren't you proud of me, my friendly air gunners out there? I got a gun. <laughs> Kevy got a gun. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, I went shopping today at LaFave's, and then I went to Canadian Tire and went, oh darn, I wish I knew. But it's okay. I'm going to give this nitro thing a try. I've never played with a nitro gun before. Uh, lots of springers, as you guys know, and I'm famous for doing mod parts, grips, and all kinds of little toys I machined for tens of thousands of people worldwide for many years. Um, but it's time to get back into pellet guns again. And uh, I'm better with a rifle than I am a pistol. And uh, I saw this at Lafave Sport and Hobby in North Bay and thought I'd check it out. It's got a two-stage uh, adjustable trigger on it. 3 by 9 by 32 scope comes with. Picatinny rail. Um, what else has it got? 25% um, more accurate, they say, because of the nitro piston. So, less recoil, apparently, than a regular Springer. I guess we're going to find out, because I do remember what it feels like to shoot a Springer spring rifle. Now, this is not a PAL-rated gun. Um, I don't have my PAL, so I have to buy the non-PAL stuff, which is okay. I don't mind. But... I went to Canadian Tire, so continuing on the story, went to Canadian Tire afterwards and saw that they actually carry the QB78 there. And I was like, and I could have saved like over 40 bucks. But that's okay, I got this. And this comes with a five year warranty too from Crossman, which is actually awesome. And the first year of it, LaFave deals with for me, so that's great. And then after that, I'm on my own with shipping it back and forth between here and Quebec if I have any issues. And I was a little leery on Nitro, uh, but it's been a number of years since Crossman started their little Nitro frenzy. Because at the beginning, they did have some issues with Nitro pistons failing a lot. So hopefully we don't have any of those issues. And it looks like i got to set the scope up myself too. Couldn't just do it all assembled, could they? No. Okay, so we've got our mounts in here. Wow. At least they got some darn good mounts. Very nice. Don't want to lose that screw. Gonna need that. That's alrighty. So it looks like I'll be having some fun playing around with this getting it set up, sighted in. Apparently nitro pistons break in after about a hundred shots, so they tell me. That tells you how much I know about nitro. Zip. Okay. Talk to me about spring guns, CO2 guns, pumpers. I'm your guy. But when it comes to these nitro things, well, I got some learning to do. And then at some point I may be the guy to ask. So, it is a synthetic stock, but it's also a thumb hole style stock, which is kind of nice too. And it does have a little, I guess, an automatic safety on this thing, or you can manually flick it. Um, wow, that's going to be interesting to adjust the trigger on that sucker. I'm going to have to read the book on that. And they are a bugger to crack initially, so... Not too shabby. Like the rail though. Yeah, not bad. Good for a lefty or a righty. It's a universal stock. You know, so it's got a, basically your cheek piece on either side. So whether you're left handed or right handed, and I'm a lefty shooter. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be nice. Nice little, uh, muzzle brake or muzzle weight whatever you want to call call the sucker on this one that's not too shabby I like the color too it's all black I like black so let's take a little bit of a meander at the scope here so we have a center point scope with a lot of zoom to it yeah. Three by nine, three to nine times. That's all right. So you can either shoot with the cap covers on or with them off. It's 
kind of up to you. I like the picture with the moth myself. That's all right. Nice. Yep. That's a cool. Let's check out our adjusters. Ooh, very sensitive micro clickers. Wow. That has got a lot of adjustment room to it. It's going to be fun setting this thing up. Good thing I got a brand new box of targets in the room. So, while I was there, of course, I got a goodie bag. So, to get me started back into having some fun, I got two tins of 22 caliber 14.3 grain. 175. You know, the Crossman really got to make these in like a 500 count would be useful. They have hollow points in 500. Why not point it? I mean, they don't take up that much extra space. Anyway, so I got two of these. And then I got what they call the Ultimate Hunting Pellet Assortment by Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin Discovery. So you get a pointed pellet, you get a normal dome, you get a hollow pellet. Um, and of course a funky looking kind of a their version of a polymer tip pellet with it the polymer okay let's uh, check this out you get a hundred rounds of each oh I can tell I'm gonna have to get uh, one of my containers and divide some pellets out this is gonna be cool oh those little pointy ones look pretty good it's kind of like um, between a pointed and a hollow point at the same time, you know. Kind of a neat little design there. So you can break some bones and kill your target while you're at it. There you go. So, not a very good little container, but it'll work. So, what did this stuff cost here? This was $18.99, which actually these apparently went down in price, so I saved two bucks. And these were $9.99 a tin, which isn't bad. A little cheaper than Canadian Tire for their pellets. And the gun, oh my gosh. I almost had a heart attack, but you do what you got to do. $279.99 Canadian for this gun. So, 22 caliber. Shoots up to 495 feet per second. So, we'll see how close it actually comes to that, but... You know, it, it's an interesting little toy, you know, and uh, we'll see how well it works out. Um, I don't expect I'll have too many problems getting used to it. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to go off camera now. Um, I'm going to have to take the next, oh, I don't know, little while and set up this scope and get it all mounted and sight it in because I want to sight it in for at least 40 feet and see what we get for penetration. So I will do some penetration tests for you guys. So there will be video on that, of course. Um, so do stay tuned for that sort of fun stuff. And uh, we'll continue on. But uh, in the meantime, um, to all my air gun fans out there, I'm sure a lot of you are proud of me uh, that I finally got back into doing this stuff. Because I have had a lot of my pellet gun guys I'm like, man, I wish you'd get back into pellet guns and, you know, and uh, I really, you know, for the longest time, I kind of just didn't really want to. I wanted to kind of get out of it and, you know, and uh, I started thinking lately, well, I need some extra, extra, extracurricular activity other than the RC world. And uh, I do love pellet guns. They are a lot of fun. Um, they're still... You know, I mean, there's a lot of options out there. More options actually now than there used to be. <clears throat> so that's actually kind of good. Uh, we're getting more and more cooler pellet guns. And uh, that's very encouraging. Uh, although I wish the prices were a little bit cheaper on some of them. Because some of them really aren't worth the money they're asking. Um, and anybody who knows me, I used to have a, uh, an air gun business. Uh, not just making mod parts and stuff. But I used to sell pellet guns at one time too. And uh, I really enjoyed it, but uh, I really don't want to get back into selling guns again. But I wouldn't mind getting back into, you know, 
the modding and stuff, but I don't think I'd ever get back into grips because, you know, the older you get, your body just doesn't want to take that wood dust, you know, with or without mask, doesn't matter. Some of those woods get through the masks and it's just horrifying, so, you know, I uh, will not be getting back into making grips uh, again. And I still get tons of emails all the time, people asking me, can you make me a set of grips for this or that, I'll pay whatever you want. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you're willing, but you know what, I'm not, I'm sorry, you know, and I'm only missing one key tool out of my wood shop to make grips with, and it can stay that way, because I really don't want to get back into making grips, you know, and I only have one set left of my uh, original full target grips in left-handed, that are laminate, uh, they're like maple and walnut, and I may use them on a gun, I may not, but, you know, I don't know, it's hard to say, and I got this one on backwards, but, uh, see, that's what happens when I'm talking, I don't pay attention, right, but, uh, anyhow, uh, I do thank you guys for watching, and look forward to your comments, if anybody knows much about the F11, um, you know, for failures or things I need to know about or look for, uh, do me a favor, shoot me a little comment in the uh, boxes below. Um, if you have experience with this gun, let me know what you actually think of it. Um, also, let me know about taking it apart if there's anything I need to know, because uh, I might want to pull it apart and see what makes it tick uh, down the road, you know, but uh, for the first while, we're going to leave things alone. Um, but, um, you know, you get the yeah. You guys get the idea, right? Anyways, so um, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for actually quite a few videos. I'm sure on this gun, I'm gonna have a lot of fun plinking cans and other stuff with this thing, and just enjoy the heck out of shooting guns. Country. Yeah. It was funny though. Um, one last thing. The funny thing I. I I almost laughed myself silly when the guy told me this. He says, the nitro guns are a little quieter than regular Springers. And I'm like, you must be confused with CO2 guns. They're loud. These are not. And Springers aren't loud either. But uh, anyways, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see. I, like I said, no experience with nitro guns, so we'll see what it's like for quietness. We'll see how much less, um, uh, what do you call it there? less recoil you know see what that's like as well and uh just continue on so catch you on the next one guys thanks see ya